Quentin's poor. What? Tyler got into a road accident. Tell me, Scott, is she okay? Where are you? I panicked while talking to my brother on the phone. She's okay. Tyler's with us. No need to come. No. I'm on my way. I'm coming over now. After receiving their location on the email, I stepped up the accelerator while dialing Kurt on the phone to ask him for a favor. Kurt, can you please pick up Freya in the jewelry store? Tyler is in trouble, so I'm on the road to go to her. What the fuck, man? You left Freya in the store all by herself. She's your fiance. How could you? Tyler has Lucian and Scott. At least you should have dropped Freya off at her house. I know. I know that, but Tyler needs me. She's in an accident for crying out loud. I couldn't hold back my frustration. And Freya doesn't need you right now. Man, your engagement party is coming. You should be with her instead of going to Tyler. Go back to Freya. Let Scott and Lucian go to Tyler. I don't hold consent to this marriage. I screech. Kurt, I'm really in a hurry. Please give me your word that you will pick her up and drive her home safely. He sighed on the line before I heard some rustling of sheets. Of course, I'd go pick her up. I'm not as heartless as you by leaving her on her own there. Freya doesn't deserve someone like you as her husband. Ignoring his remark, I breathed a sigh of relief. Thank you, Kurt. After almost 30 minutes, I parked outside Scott's flat, where he said that Lucian and Tyler were staying for the night. Tyler, babe, what happened? Are you okay? I immediately propped down to the floor beside the couch where Tyler is resting. She reeked of alcohol, which is her major weakness. Her body can't handle alcohol. When she's drunk, she barely can hold herself together. That's why I have to be there for her. I gently caressed her face. Tyler, babe, I'm here. Are you feeling well? She opened her bloodshot eyes. My heart sank to the bottom. It pains me more than ever to see her in this miserable state. I turned to Scott, who's on the other side of the sofa drinking a soda. What are you doing? She's supposed to be in the hospital. Lucian already took her there. Don't worry. She'll be okay. You can go back to Freya now. He answered sarcastically, and straining myself from punching his goddamn face. I scooped up Tyler in my arms. Come on, I'll take you to the infirmary. Don't touch me. She pushed me away and retreated back to her seat sulking. Why are you here? Have you broken your engagement with Freya? No, but... Then you have no business being here with me. Leave me alone. No, I refuse to leave you. I am also your mate, Tyler. I care for you. Leave me alone. Care for me? She laughed bitterly. If you really do, then break off your engagement with that woman. That's the only time that I will believe that I really matter to you and you love me. Scott, please make him leave now. I don't want to see him. Scott stood up and whacked me on my back. Quint, I suggest you leave. Can't you see she's still hurting? Let her be for now. Respect her decision. No, I'm not leaving. Tyler, please, let's talk, babe. She doesn't want to see you, Quentin. Lucian came in from the kitchen. Leave now or suffer the consequences of forcing yourself to our mate. I don't want to surrender because I really wanted to be here with her. But what good would it be if she doesn't want me around? My brothers were right. I should respect what she wanted. Okay, okay. I said in resignation. My fists curled so tightly that my nails started digging into my flesh. We'll leave now. Please take good care of her. You don't have to tell us that. Scott uttered and waved me goodbye. Freya's pavio. I'll buy this. I said looking at a blue diamond ring that I will give Quentin as his engagement ring. I could have called my mother to send me a chauffeur, but I don't want her to think badly of Quentin. So I waited for someone to pick me up as he instructed. I also took my time looking around to choose a ring for him. Even though I know he will likely object to the idea, still, I will push through my luck. You got an eye for jewelry, miss. Freya, I'm sure your fiancé will love it. Sherlin said from my side, I bite my lip in doubt. Really, I sure want to hope he'll like it. I'm sure he will not just like it, missus. Freya, I can see that Mr. Black will love it. I'll pack this now for you. Thank you so much, and with the bag on my lap that I held closer to my heart. I prayed that Quent would accept and like my choice of ring for him. While I sat there waiting for someone who would pick me up, my mind was on Quentin and Tyler. Deep inside, I'm worried for her. She may not have replied to any of my calls and texts, but Tyler will always be my best friend. 
Freya, Freya. Hey, Kurt. I smiled at Quentin's brother, stood up, and fixed my dress. He might have called him to get me home. Quentin called me to pick you up. On his behalf, please accept my apologies for leaving you. He's not in his right mind for doing this to you. I waved my hand at him to keep him from apologizing. Oh, no need. I sincerely understand his reason. Kurt shook his head in astonishment. Wow, you're so understanding considering how my brother acted like a douchebag. Freya, how about you come with me to a party to compensate for Quentin ruining your day? It'll be fun there. You'll meet new friends. Come on. I hesitated for a second, but Kurt was so good at convincing me that I found myself saying yes. Nice. You'll surely have fun there, Freya. Don't worry. Trust me. I'll take care of you. Oh, thank you. That was all I could manage to say before he pulled me into his sports car. Kurt took me to an engagement party of his influencer friend, Clara, which was held at a beach. All kinds of food and alcohol are flowing. The sounds from a DJ are blaring, and the atmosphere is so wild that I feel like I'm a gate crasher. Everyone is dancing, drinking, and talking to people. Some were even petting on the side. This felt more like a club rather than a simple party. I hugged myself. I feel so out of place because I'm not used to this kind of party. If not because of Kurt who convinced me to come, I would have straight gone back to home. My friends are cool and very accommodating. They'll love you, Freya. You should go out and meet lots of people too. This world is more than just Tyler and Quint. Come on, I'll introduce you to them. Pulling me to a bunch of girls hurtling on the table, Kurt hugged her friends who looked curiously at me. Guys, meet Freya. Frey, this is Clara and Amelia. This is Freya, Quentin's fiance. Hi, Freya. It's nice to meet you. Welcome and enjoy the party. Hi, hello, Clara. Nice to meet you, too. I returned her wide smile and shook her hand. I'm Amelia. I've heard so much about you, girl. Kurt said his brother found a very ideal wife to be. I can definitely see. Thank you so much. I shook their hands and exchanged pleasantries. I was pleasantly surprised by their reaction. I thought I would be met with hostility given that our circle already heard about our engagement and the issue with Tyler, but Kurt was right. They are friendly, really, really friendly. Excuse me, Freya. I'll just go to my friends over there. Will you be okay here? Yeah, of course. Go on. I'll be all right here. Thank you. I'll be right back. Amelia, Cara, please take care of our dear Freya. No worries. We got her. Amelia answered and locked her arm on mine. So, Freya, when's the wedding? Carla teased me when there's only the three of us. Blushing, I mentally checked if there's already a definite date we had agreed. No exact date yet, but it's the soonest according to our parents. Great. Welcome to the world of married couples in weeks to come. Oh, excuse me. I forgot that I have to go find my boyfriend. Need to tell him something. Carla left us, so we decided to go grab some food on the buffet. Frey, I'll just get drinks for us. Okay, I'll be waiting on the table. I returned to our spot and ate silently. The feeling of being an outcast came back when I watched the guests talking and laughing with other people. I just can't do that. It takes a while for me to warm up to a person. Oh, so the snake is here. A woman in a mini skirt and tube top just sat beside me without asking for permission. Her brows are raised, her cheeks are red, and she reeks of alcohol. Oh, so the snake is here. Hey, you're Freya McKenna, right? The infamous boyfriend stealer. What you what? I stuttered. Who is this woman? I looked around to search for Kurt or Amelia, but they were obscured by the crowd from me. Don't play innocent. You're famous for stealing your own best friend's boyfriend. Everybody knows you here, and you still had the guts to come and show your face. You? Are you that low? What did you do to him, though? Did you sleep with him? Did you suck his dick, bitch? Both deeply disturbed by the things that came out from her mouth and dumbfounded by some level of truth in her words, all I could do was to bow down to hide my face that's already red in embarrassment from the scene that she's making. I can't look anywhere for fear that somebody is watching us. 
Cat got your tongue, whore. She continued to provoke me. What the fuck was your problem, Lily? Amelia came to my rescue. How could you say those things to Freya? They were arranged to be married by their own parents. Freya did not steal anyone's boyfriend. It's not like they had a choice. It's tradition, so they're obligated to do what they're told to do. You know what? You're the stealer here, bitch. Attention, stealer. Lily rolled her eyes at us before going away. Amelia cupped my face, worried about me. That's Lily, the self-proclaimed mean girl. Don't mind her. Don't let her words get to you, Freya. You are not doing anything wrong. Come on, let's just drink. Let's drink the night away. She gave me a shot glass of whiskey and clanked her glass with mine. I hesitated for a bit. Lily's words rang into my head, and it pierced my heart knowing that there is half-truth in there. I don't drink, but tonight will be an exception. I'm too stressed to pass off the drink. Amelia is right. I should just drink this night away. With that thought, I put the glass on my mouth and drink it bottoms up. Quentin's pawed. What? Kurt didn't drop off Freya to her house. Why didn't I know this? I asked my sister Lila, who's lying on the floor, her eyes glued on her phone. I just got home and was about to call Kurt to ask him when Lila told me. Because you're too busy with Tyler. Even so, I specifically told him to pick Freya and return her home safely, not to bring her to a beach party where she knows no one there. Relax. There's Kurt. She knows him. Hey, hey, Quint. I snatched the phone from her hand and answered the phone. I could strangle his neck at this instant. What are you doing? Why did you bring Freya there? What the bump of fuck is this, Quint? Hey, man, we were just having time. I, if, oh, only you could see Freya. Damn, she knows how to have fun. Are you drunk? I noticed when he can't properly pronounce words. Do not drive, you stay there. I'm going to get her. I retrieved my jacket and keys and headed for the door. Hey, my phone? Lila came after me and stopped me beside my car to get her phone. Quint, Kurt sent a video. She showed me the screen, and boy was I shocked to see the sweet little Freya dancing on the mini stage with boys around her. She's obviously drunk judging by how she smiled at the man. Her hair is disheveled and her pretty little black dress has knots all over it. I swallowed the lump on my throat. I could feel my head growing in anger and something that I can't put a name into. Where are you going? I will get Freya and I will kill that Kurt. I hollered before getting in the car and driving away at an impossible speed. Lost in the music and drunk by a few bottles of alcohol. I swayed in the rhythm of the wild song and put my hands in the air. My body felt so light, even when I'm jumping and dancing with Amelia and Clara and all the other friends that I met this night. I can't control my head anymore. It spins in a good way that I feel so free from all the worries in the world. The guy from Kurt's circle joined us in the middle of the dance floor and asked me to dance with him when the music switched to a more intimate one. I'm sorry, what? I leaned closer to hear him. The stereos are blasting, so it's impossible to hear him. I want to dance with you. He raised his hand to touch my face, but before he could do that, someone jerked him away from me. Get your hands off my wife. She's not going to dance with you. Quentin, in his darkest expression that I've ever seen him wore, grunted at the man who stepped back and disappeared into the crowd. Dazzled by the sudden appearance of Quentin, I moved to check if it was really him. Quent. Is that really you? I lost my balance, and I thought I'm really going to fall to the sand because my knees felt like jellies, but his reflexes were quicker. He caught me by the waist, shoved me into his arms, and threw me gently into his shoulder. You've had enough. I'm taking you home. Okay. I readily agreed and waved at the girls who waved back at me. Those girls. My husband is taking me home, I said drunkenly. He gently placed me into the passenger seat of his car and put on my seatbelt. Quint, I'm really sorry for upsetting you. Are you upset? I questioned him after he sat behind the steering wheel and started driving. No, no. Of course I'm not. No need to apologize. I'm not upset with you. It's my fault for entrusting you to Kurt when I know how irresponsible he could be. I should have dropped you off to your house. You wouldn't have to experience that. I'm sorry. No, don't be. I really had fun tonight. I met new people. They're nice. I gained new friends. You know, I continued to blabber incomprehensibly. 
resting my head on the backrest, I tilted my face to his side and tried to focus my hazy sight on him. With eyes glazed, I scanned Quentin's muscular arms glistening with the vodka that I accidentally spilled on him earlier when he pulled me into him. My eyes went down to his veiny hands. I bite my finger in a flirting manner and glanced at his hair. I wonder how does it feel to feel its texture. Maybe it's the spirit of the liquor that possessed me at that time, but I just found myself unbuckling my seatbelt and seductively climbing into his lap. I inhaled his scent while I slowly lowered my body into his crotch. I saw him gulped. His one hand gripped the wheel tightly while his free hand supported my waist to keep me from falling off the seat. In the soft glow of the dim lights inside his car, I finally had the courage to be this close to him. I'd finally able to meet his at this distance without having to look away and fluster. I've been meaning to do this, I huskily said and reached for his hair and slowly brush it using my fingers while absent-mindedly rocking myself on his legs. Quentin groaned and tried lifting me away from his body, but I tightly clung into his arms and burrowed my face on his neck. Freya, I'm driving. It's dangerous. Can you please not do that? He pleaded when I started moving my nose up and down against the skin on his neck. His scent is addicting to me. It's more intoxicating than the shots of tequila I took, but I want to do it. I snorted like a brat and continued rubbing my face on him and grinding my body. You are drunk. You don't know what you're doing. No, I'm not. Just tipsy. I know what I'm doing. I giggled after saying that. Oh, man. I heard him say before pulling the car up on the corner and hoisting me back to my seat despite my protests. What you did was very dangerous, Freya. I can't focus on the road. Don't do that again or else we'll end up in an accident. He lectured me. He pouted my lips and closed my eyes. I'm sorry, Quinn. I'm sorry. He sighed and reclined my seat and then arranged his jacket on top of me. Sleep. I'll wake you up once we arrived. After several minutes of snoozing, I jolted and looked out of the window. The car is no longer moving and we're parked outside a familiar landscape. Beginning to sober up, my eyes widened when I realized where we are. Where are we? I turned to Quentin, who seemed amused by my reaction. Outside your house. Oh no, please. I can't let my parents see me in this state. I don't know what to tell them, or I uttered terrorized by my untoward actions. Just tell them you're drunk. You're 20 and of legal age. You can drink. I'll explain everything to them. It's my fault. No, no. Etienne, I stopped him from going down. I don't want to implicate Quentin when it's my own decision to come with Kurt. Can you please not let them see me like this? Please, just for my personal reasons. Quint, he reluctantly agrees and calls someone on the phone. Hey, bud, can you please call Mrs. McKenna to tell her that Freya won't be able to go home tonight? He looked at me and nodded. Yes, yes, she's with me. She'll be staying the night with me in the house. My mouth literally dropped open. Quentin's povy. I decided to bring Freya to our house instead of going to a nearby hotel to spend the night. It feels safer for her and for me that way. I asked Lila for a favor to tell Mrs. McKenna that Freya won't be coming home tonight. I know I could call her to inform her, but I'm having a difficulty explaining that her daughter is wasted. Can I really tell her that I left Freya in the store to go to Tyler, and then my brother whom I have entrusted to pick Freya coaxed her to go to a party where she fell drunk? No, no, I must be out of my mind if I do that, so here I am, struggling too hard with a drunk woman in my arms who can't stop giggling and moving her body. Easy, easy. I tactically supported her small back to prevent her from falling backward while I reached inside my pants for the key. I've been calling Lila to open the door for me, but she's not answering. She must have been reading those comic books again. The position we're in is too intimate. Our bodies press towards each other and our face is almost touching. I can breathe through her scent. A mixture of expensive vodka and vanilla perfume. Freya is slumped in my shoulders with her face buried in my neck, sniffing like a puppy. All I could do was release a sigh to control myself from moaning. My neck is an erogenous spot for me, and I easily get turned on when Tyler starts touching me there, which Freya is unconsciously doing now with her nose. If someone could see us right now, they might think that we're making out. Who are you? She asked and cupped my face. Her eyes are narrow and her cheeks are glowing in pink from the effect of the alcohol. I'm Quent. 
I replied and cursed gratefully when I opened the door. You're Quent, she murmured, her eyes closed again. She puckered her lips while making weird noises. I find her too adorable pouting those red luscious lips, but her fake moans are stirring up something inside of me. To get rid of the dangerous discomfort on my groin, I put her over my shoulder and ascended the stairs. Quent, Quent. Shh, be quiet or else people might hear us. My plea fell onto dead ears when the master's bedroom croaked open and my father came out rubbing his eyes before putting on his glasses. Shit. Pulling back as fast as I could, I turned to a hallway and went straight to my room. I gently lay her on my bed. But when I was about to stand straight, she wrapped her arms around my neck and yanked me into her parted lips. Instinctively, my brain said I should push her away, but the second I tasted her lips, all the red warning in my head stopped blinking. I shut down my rational mind and responded to the kiss that instantly burned me to the core. The situation is pure heaven and hell. As my pants tightened with each passing second that our mouths mated, my thoughts have also been blurred by lust. I wanted more of her. I wanted to kiss her deeply, to play with her tongue, to undress her and touch her more. Quint. She called in between her teeth. Lee Pras and immediately got up to collect myself. Aware of the gravity of the consequences, if I let my primal need prevail, I gathered her again in my arms and went ahead to Lila's room. You can let her sleep in your room. Damn boy, no one would bat an eye. She's your fiancé. No, it would be more comfortable for her to sleep in your room tonight. I don't want her to think that I took a disadvantage on her. I respect her. She sighed and set aside her book she's reading when I barged inside her room. How noble, but you're still a jerk for leaving her. It's your fault. Come inside and put her in my bed. I'll just get some more pillows and blankets. I carefully stashed her away in bed and made sure she's covered to prevent her from snagging me again. My eyes darted on her lips and the familiar heat flared down between my thighs. Damn, when did I find her so fucking attractive? Freya Pawar, it has been 10 seconds since I woke up, but I never bothered to move. I just stared at the unfamiliar ceiling, not knowing what to do. My head felt like being pounded by a nail and hammer splitting it into two. My throat is dry, and I'm too groggy to sit up, but surprisingly, none of that bothered me as much as the memories of last night that are beginning to haunt me. I flirted with Quentin, and on top of that, I kissed him. I really did. Good morning, Freya. I smiled at her. Good morning, Lila. Thank you for letting me sleep in your bed. Did I just pass out last night? Yes, you did. You're so wasted last night, so Quentin decided it's best if you stayed the night here. Don't worry. I was the one who changed your clothes. That's when I noticed the fresh, new clothes I was in. Thank you, Lila, I then said, stopping to gape at her tattoo just above her waist. I squinted to read it. Lucian, am I reading it right? Her brother's name is tattooed on her body. I find it strange, but didn't say or comment anything. Kissing Quentin recklessly is more bothersome. A knock on the open door distracted myself into overthinking about the man who just materialized right in front of me now. Talk about timing. Good morning, feeling a bit okay now. I blinked furiously and casually slid back into the cupboard. Good morning, Quent. Yeah, I'm feeling a lot better. What happened? Why did you bring me here? Did I do something stupid? I blacked out last night and I can't remember a thing. Where's Kurt? I lied brazenly because this is the only thing I know to get out of the possible awkward situation if he knows that I perfectly remembered it all. Quentin stilled studying my face and then nodded afterwards. You're just a little bit drunk last night. Your body can't take too much alcohol. I'm worried about what your mother will say, so I brought you here. Thank you, appreciate it so much, I said with a straight face to keep my act together. Caillou guys, guys, I think you should see this. Lila interrupted to show us her phone. You are on the hot search online. Quentin ran outside to get his phone while I watched the video that fully woke me up from being disoriented. Freya's Palvi. Oh my God. Oh my God. I threw my cell phone on the bed after I repeatedly watched the viral videos of me and Quentin during Clara's beach party. It has only been uploaded for a few hours and the amount of shares and comments online is insane. I buried my face on the pillow, trying to remember what else had happened that night. I clearly remembered kissing Quentin, but prior to that, I barely had any idea. The memories of last night slowly crept in my head. I recalled dancing with my newfound friends 
And then a guy wanted to dance with me, but then Quentin suddenly appeared and shouted something I don't remember much. Wait, what did he say? I watched the video again. Get your hands off my wife. Quentin screamed at the guy's face, scaring him away, and then I began dancing on him. All I know is I've been too flirty with Quentin and it's caught on that video that is making rounds in the social media. What should I do? Nervous and worried because of what my parents and the blacks would think about me. I paced back and forth thinking about a possible solution, but my head was empty and throbbing because of a hangover. It was just one night of having fun, a drunken mistake on my part, and I almost risked it all. My reputation is now tainted. I was about to go back to bed to call mom when I heard some voices outside. There's a commotion with my heart beating so loud, I ran to the living room only to see Lucian and Scott teaming up against Quentin. Lucian pushed Quentin to the wall. What the fuck do you really want to happen, Quentin? Do you really want to hurt Tyler over and over again? I stepped forward to help him, but Kurt pulled my arm saying, I should not get involved. Boys can get rowdy and I might get hurt in the process. You know what, Quinn? Isn't it enough that you heard by agreeing to this marriage? Do you really have to upset Tyler with those videos of you and Freya? Scott asked, who's seriously looking at Quentin with a glint of hatred in his eyes. I waited for Quint's answer, but he just stood there staring at nowhere and not even speaking a word. If you really want to do this, then be a man to Tyler. It's either you cut all of her connection with her or you'll go to her now and explain everything. Can you do that? Lucian challenged him. I looked at Quentin, who briefly glanced at me before nodding and rushing off to his car. I felt numbed at that instant. I was rooted on the spot, holding my tears from falling. Nothing has changed. It would always be Tyler above else. Quentin's priority will always be her. I thought the pain he caused me was enough to last me for the day. But I was wrong when my parents together, with Quentin's parents, arrived in the house looking for the two of us. Mom, Dad, my hands began trembling due to anxiousness. I can't look them in the eyes, seeing the dismay in them. I'm really disappointed with you, young lady. Dad said in a repressed anger. Your mom and I trusted you to be responsible, but look what you've done. You dragged our family's name into that cheap mess. I bowed my head in chagrin. But it was her who didn't think. Coming to that party is one thing. Getting drunk and doing those things while people are watching is another. My dad again. Where's Quentin? Why is he letting Freya take all the blame when there were two of them in this mess? He went to Tyler. Scott answered. She's upset too because of this incident. He should be with Freya at this crucial time. He knows it will happen. What is he thinking? Hearing that is like putting salt on my wound. It's like everyone is rubbing on my face. The fact that if Tyler and I are drowning, Quentin will not hesitate to jump right into the water to save Tyler. Quentin's puffy. I found Tyler in her apartment using the key she gave me. It's a mess. Things were strewn all over her house. Broken vases lined up the floor while she's drinking her third bottle. Her eyes were red, her face drenched in tears, and her hair in disarray. What the fuck was that, huh, Quentin? Get your hands off my wife. She mimicked me. Really? Your wife? So you won't break the engagement? You will really marry that bitch. I breathed hard and pulled her down to the sofa to calm her down. Yes, I'll marry Freya. I have decided that I will not break off the engagement with her, and she's not a bitch. She has a name. It's Freya. No. She stood up again and reached for another vase and threw it on the wall. I will not let you. You will not marry that whore. You love me, Quentin. You told me I am the only woman that you will ever love. That wedding is not happening. I will do everything to stop you from marrying that bitch. Tyler, please. You know how complicated the situation is, but she won't hear the reason from me. Her mind is already hell-bent to believe what she wanted to believe. What did that whore do to you? Did she seduce you? Is she that good in bed? Tell me, Quint. Tyler, you are out of the line. Freya is not that kind of woman. You should know that out of all the people. You are her best friend. She hugged me suddenly and began sobbing loudly. All I know is that she stole you from me. Quint, please, don't marry her. Eventually, I would have chosen you instead of Scott and Lucian in the end. Please, Quint, let's fix this. 
It's too late now, Tyler, I said, pushing her away, despite the fact that I'm also hurting deep inside. This is the only best way I see for us to be able to move forward. It's hard knowing that she could have really chosen me from the start, but instead led my brothers on. I'm formally breaking up with you, I finally said, my voice breaking. It's the night of my engagement party with Quentin, but there is scarcely any makeup on my face. Since the incident, which consequently died down, when the public has seen another viral video to feast upon, I haven't talked and seen Quentin looking at myself in the mirror. I began to doubt my decision, though I also know that it's too late to turn my back on something that the two families have strongly committed to. Taking one more long breath, I stood up to call my makeup artist to begin my preparation. But I was transfixed on my position when I saw Tyler slowly closing the door on her back. She's wearing that smug smile on her face and dark circles circled her eyes. Busy preparing, aren't we? Crossing arms, she languidly walked to my side and stared at the makeup kits and the jewelry on the board. You're busy preparing for your party later with Quentin Black. Tyler, how did you... was all I could say. BR, I gulped and averted her sharp eyes. I'm so guilty right now in front of her. Bari? How did I enter your room? Is that what you're asking me? She gave out an empty laugh. Why, am I not welcome anymore? But you always call me to come here for a bestie overnight stay while we watch your favorite ugly good for nothing wrong. Calm movies. It's your engagement party, and yet you didn't invite your one and only best friend. No, no, that's not what I meant. Come on, Tyler. My tears started filling up my eyes. It's painful to see our friendship end like this. She shrugged her shoulders and continued walking across the room. She stopped in front of a photo frame. My mother hung in my room and smirked when she saw my photos with Quentin. Wow, wow. She started clapping on my face. What can I say but congratulations, my dear best friend. Finally, you got what you wanted from the very start. You like Quentin, don't you? You like him even when you know he is my mate, you bitch. She slapped me hard on the face and pulled my hair. But I didn't fight, I endured the pain and let her be. If this is her way of letting out her anger on me, it's okay. I can take it because I know that I hurt her too. You thought I didn't know that you've always liked my boyfriend? She asked, gasping. I know you always wanted him for yourself. You're always shy around him. I thought it's just nothing but after the announcement, I connected the dots. Is that why you befriend me? So that you could watch my moves and steal my boyfriend from me? I knew it! You were always envious of me, Freya. You're jealous of me because many boys like me, because I'm popular and beautiful and smart. Did you beg your rich mama to make him yours? Did you seduce my boyfriend into your bed? Tears started streaming down my face. How could she think of me like that? I can accept the other things she said, but not this. My conscience is clear. You know I'm not like that, Tyler. I can't do that to you. I didn't steal him from you. I didn't know that my parents were planning to arrange this marriage. I swear I tried to stop it because I don't want to hurt you and Quentin. I saw how you love each other. God knows how many times I talked to my parents to end this whole thing. But they refused, so I asked Quentin, but he told me he can't because he's obligated by his own parents to marry me. Tyler, please understand us. We're just victims, too, of this circumstance. Believe me, please. I'm telling you the truth. Believe you. She scoffed. How can I believe someone who has mischievously taken a boyfriend from her own best friend, acting all innocent so people would fall to her whims? You are one spoiled kid just because you have money. And Freya, you're right when you said that Quentin and I love each other. She began walking around me, grinning every time her eyes would look at how I hid my face from her. Do you think you have succeeded already? Quentin will not like you, Freya. You will always be in my shadow, forever proving yourself for him, but never ever living up to the standards that I am. You will beg for his love that he can never give to you. On your first night together, he won't even look or touch and kiss you. I am his mate, his one and only love. We're bonded together. I know him from his head to his toe. We've done everything we could possibly do. You can never surpass the memories that we've made. 
poor, you little ugly Freya. Do you know what he told me? That he'll only love one woman in his lifetime, and that is me? Only me. I nodded and wiped my tears. I'm very much aware of that fact. She didn't have to tell me anymore. This marriage will be a nightmare for you, that you'll regret that you ever agreed to this. You might be her future wife in the papers, but I am the one he will always love. Tears swell again in my eyes. I completely understand you, Tyler. I really do. I hurt you. I was the one who did this to our friendship. I'm sorry, Tyler. That's right. You hurt me so much. You hurt me to the point that I don't recognize you as my friend. I'm, I'm really, really sorry for everything. I know you can't possibly forgive me, but I'm still wishing that you could find it in your heart someday. Tyler walked up to the door, but before she could leave, she stared at me begrudgingly first. You're right, Freya. I can't possibly forgive you for betraying me. From now on, you're not my friend anymore because I don't ever want to be associated with a snake like you are. Freya's Pulvi, I worriedly looked at my compact mirror again and sighed. My left cheek is red from Tyler's slap earlier. I already iced it and tried to hide it using makeup, but it still shows, so I just decided to free some of my loose hair to conceal the red mark. But even that is not enough. Freya, your mother is asking if you're ready to come down. The guests are already waiting for you. My personal driver politely informed me. Taking a deep breath, I nodded. Yes, Arturo, I'm going out now. And the cold November wind greeted me when he opened the car door for me. I braced myself and smiled at him. Thank you. My pleasure, Miss Freya. Holding the train of my teal evening gown on one hand and my black velvety purse on the other, I closed my eyes to ready myself. But when I opened it back up, I was more than surprised to see the man who's waiting at the entrance of the hotel for me. My heart sang love when we locked our gaze. Quentin, who looked so ravishing in his navy blue suit, traced his steps towards me. Hi, I said, praying he wouldn't notice my shaking voice. Hello, he replied, his sparkling stare unconsciously expressing that he liked what he's seen. You look really beautiful. He whispered more to himself, and my cheeks blushed and my eyelashes fluttered. I wasn't ready to hear him compliment me. Thank you, Quint. You look so beautiful too. I mean, you look handsome. I laughed nervously, hoping against hope that he'll not find me as some kind of a weird girl. I want him to see me as a capable woman he'll be marrying. I want him to see the potential in me as his mate. A strong alpha like Quentin deserves a strong and confident mate too. He jokingly turned around. I know. He said, trying to sound arrogant, and a laugh escaped my mouth, but it soon disappeared when he leaned closer to me and randomly caressed my left cheek in a concerned manner. Why? What happened to your cheek? He asked and tried to touch my face again, but I moved away and smiled, carefully arranging back a few strands of my hair to conceal the mark. It's nothing. Just make up. Maybe I put on too much blush. I'll retouch it later. Hey, I have something to show you. I changed the subject immediately when I felt that he's not satisfied with my answer and he wanted to ask more questions. I set a bunch of my hair aside to show him something on my neck. As I expected, his face lit up in delight and recognition upon seeing it. This is the necklace your late grandmother Elizabeth gave to me. I wore this tonight as a sign of my appreciation to you and the Blacks family. He moved forward fingering the delicate beads of rubies and diamonds on the necklace. Holding my breath, my hands formed into a fist behind my back when he accidentally touched the sensitive skin over there. Grandma must have really adored you so much to give this to you. It's from our great grandma and her favorite necklace from her mother. Nostalgia struck me upon remembering that adorable old lady. She also told me that that's why I'm really surprised and shocked when she gave me this. Just like you, I miss her too. Grandma is a lovely person. I love listening to her stories and adventures when she was alive. Aquent, this is for you. I handed him the box of ring I bought for him. What is this? He asked, shaking the box. Open it. He excitedly unwrapped the box and opened it to reveal the blue diamond I picked as his engagement ring. I picked the blue diamond. Because I know you like them, I explained when he stayed speechless for a minute. Appreciation all over his face. How? How did you know what I like? 
he asked, still staring at the ring. I just heard it. I bought it on the same day that we went to that jewelry store. I hope you like it, Quint. Of course, I like it. In fact, I love it. Thank you, Freya. You're so thoughtful. You helped me with picking my ring, so I thought I should return the favor. I'm glad you love it. I looked over his shoulder and saw the organizer of the event who must have been searching for us. Quint, I think we should go inside. This party won't start without us. But instead of coming with me towards the elevator, he pulled me instead to a corner to tell me something. Before that, I want to tell you something. Tyler wants to talk to me first. She said it's really important. I have to go to her now. I promise I'll be back. Go with them first. I'll follow after a minute. You understand me? I was surprised that he's even telling me this. He can go to her whenever he wants without disclosing it to me, especially when it involves Tyler. But today is different. It's our engagement party. It's our first official public appearance to meet the people in our circle prior to our wedding. Quentin realizes the importance of this event as a crucial hallmark for the families. So he thought he should at least be honest with me about his dealing with Tyler. Yeah, of course. You can go. I permitted him despite the fear that rose from deep within me. Would Tyler ruin our engagement day? Is this what she meant earlier? I freed my wrist from his hand and forced a smile on my face. I'll go now, I said and forced myself to take a step forward. He didn't reply. That planted a seed of doubt in my head. Would he really be back? Would they run away and leave me hanging at the party later? I stopped walking and turned to him, Quint. Yeah? I'll be waiting for you, I declared with conviction. He gave me a small smile. Of course, I'll come back, Freya. I agreed to meet Tyler in her car parked on an alley outside the hotel. When I got inside the back seat, she was already crying her eyes out that almost dissolved my resolve to go back to the hotel. I should have been the woman you're marrying, Quint. I should be in freest place while we announce our impending marriage to everybody. She reached for my hand and begged. Please let me be that woman. Quint, be with me. My gut twisted in pain, remembering the future plans that we made together. I shouldn't have agreed to the pressure. Then we would have still been happy till now, or... But it's already too late for the two of us. Fate intervened and its decision was final. Where were your promises, Quentin? She whined when I didn't say anything. You promised me that you will always choose me? Tyler, I already told you everything, didn't I? I'm doing it for the family, so by no means our relationship must not continue. Now tell me what you wanted to say. It's the only reason why I came here despite the risk. I love you. Quint, please. I love you. I can't survive without you by my side. Pulling my collar by her hand, she tried to kiss me, but I quickly dodged her lips and unconsciously pushed her back to the seat. Stop it. What are you doing? Tyler, we're over. The sooner you accept that, the better it will be for the both of us. I'm getting married. Please accept that. This is not right. I'm here outside the venue of my engagement party, inside the car of my ex-girlfriend who just tried to kiss me. This is so wrong, I felt guilty for some reason, shocked by what I've done. She began crying again. Didn't you hear me? I love you, Quentin, and I'm choosing you over your brothers. I only want to confess my feelings to you again, hoping that you would run away with me. Come on, Quentin. Let's run away from here. In that case, they can never force you to marry Freya. I'm only making things more difficult if I do that, and I'm not like that. I'm a man who stands by my words. Fix yourself, Tyler. I'm going back now. My gaze narrowed at the road as I closed the car door behind me, assessing the situation. No matter how many times I evaluate it, marrying Freya is the only thing that I see right at the moment. I'll be waiting for you. That did something inside me. I have to hurry because she is waiting for me. I arrived in the hall just in time for my father to take the stage and clank his glass to get everyone's attention. My eyes searched for Freya in the midst of the crowd, only to realize that I don't have to do that anymore because she's already looking at me across the place. Relief is written in her eyes. Without breaking off our eye contact, I bridged our distance and stood in front of her. That was quick. You really came back, Quent? She said, barely a whisper. Of course I'll be back. I promised you. I offered my arm to her, which she gladly took. Now, let's brace ourselves for the spotlight. They will call us now. We're next to be hugged and kissed by the guests. Are you nervous? I checked her face and couldn't resist staring at the red blot on her cheek. 
Is it really makeup? Bar she shook her head, her hand tightening over my arm. No. I can't help but smile. She's obviously nervous. Tapping her hand, I cocked my head to her ear and muttered, Don't be nervous. I'm here. Just follow my lead, okay? She took a deep breath. Thank you. Everyone, as all of you know, the Blacks and McKennas have been business partners for a very, very long time. Our forefathers have already forged an indomitable bond between our clans, but only during our generation did we take another leap towards the future of the families. The houses of Blacks and McKennas will now merge through the wedding of my son, Quentin, and our soon-to-be daughter-in-law, Freya. Everyone clapped as we were ushered into the stage. Cheers and congratulations echoed in the halls as friends celebrated the forthcoming union of the two great families. I looked at Freya, who was still nervous. I can tell that she's new to this. She's camera shy and very averse to people. It will take a while before she will warm up to you. Smile. You're beautiful. I encouraged her, my hand sliding down to her hand, and intertwined our fingers together. It must have been effective because the side of her mouth curved into a smile. But before we reached the stage to accept our parents' blessings, the celebratory vibe of the place was replaced by a silence and then shushing and hushing afterwards. I looked around to see what's wrong. The guests were on their phones watching something. Quentin, I already told you to take a distance from Tyler. Look what you've done again. Another viral video from you. You made another mess on the night of your engagement party. The video in question is Tyler and I inside her car kissing. The edited angle made it look like this, even when we didn't really kiss. Notified by the repercussions of this video being uploaded on the very night of the engagement. I looked at Freya frantically and then to our parents who were now holding their phones after being informed by Kurt. My father's face is grim while my mom is clearly disappointed after I caused another problem after another. I then looked at the guests and then went back to Freya. How am I able to tell them that it's fake? I opened my mouth to explain everything, to tell them the truth that it's not what it seemed. I wanted to shout that the video was edited, but I was so overwhelmed with the situation that all I could do was watch how Freya loosely freed her hand away from mine. I messed up again. I messed up big time. I sucked my breath in sharply when I saw the video of Quentin and Tyler kissing after Tyler confessed her love for Quentin. I didn't have the heart to finish the short clip for fear that I might cry at this instant, so I pulled my hand from Quentin's and walked out of the hall. I don't want to see how the guests will look at me with pity. Their murmurings are hurting my non-existent confidence. He caught up with me in the back room. Freya, please, it's not what you think. I can explain. Please let me explain. He captured my hand and made me turn to his worried face. It's okay, Quentin. You don't have to explain to me. I have no right. I know right from the very start about your feelings with each other. In fact, I'm the real villain here, the intruder in your relationship. I've never realized how painful it is to be betrayed by him until now. For the past years, I've been content with being on the sidelines, just casually looking at him from afar, knowing that I can never have the chance to be with him. But now that the moon goddess has chosen to twist our fate, why does it feel more exhausting than what it's supposed to be? Did he really intend to ruin our engagement party despite knowing that this is very special to the two families? I can easily bear the fact that he met, talked, and then kissed Tyler, but I can never find his justification to do it purposefully in public. What for? To mock me. Freya, that's not what I mean. Please, I need you to believe in me. I swear I didn't kiss her. But I was too hurt to understand him. You could have told me that you changed your mind and that you want out of this agreement. I could have helped you, you know. No, no, Freya. I don't have any intention of canceling our wedding. We just talked. That's all. She tried to kiss me, but I pushed her away because I know it's wrong. That video circulating now is fake. It's edited. You have to believe me. Not once did I lie to you. You asked me to cancel this marriage. I didn't because I stand by my own words and I'm betting on it again. It's the only thing I have now. My honesty. At least you have to believe me. Whoever else edited that video did it to sabotage us. He made sense. The timing of the video is just uncanny and Quentin is not the type of son who likes to disappoint his parents. Though hurt, I still choose to believe him that he's telling the truth. When it comes to Quentin, I could easily bend my values and morale. Bur Quentin, what's the meaning of this? Quentin's father roared in the room. 
Behind him is Charlotte and my parents who followed us into the room. We've just gotten out from that mess you've created a while back and another one comes right in. And on the same day of the engagement party. How could we face this? Our business partners and dignitaries in the society are outside who just witnessed what you did. We're losing face again. It's embarrassing. Dad, let me explain. It's true that I met with Tyler earlier, but we just talked. I admit she wants to get back to me, but I refused. I never kissed her. We're not back together like what that video insinuated. He reasoned out. And why did you go talk to her before the ceremony? You just gave them a reason to ruin this night. Quentin, she's no good for you. She will just drag you down, my son. Why can't you understand that? Charlotte, I thought you've already talked with Quentin not to contact that woman again. Look what he'd done. He just embarrassed my daughter in front of everybody. My mother cried out. Home. Let them handle Quentin. Dad came forward to call Mom. Mom Quentin is telling the truth. I can't help but step up to his side. That video is edited. It's only made to look like he kissed Tyler to spite us. They know this would create turmoil on us. We could hire an expert to check if the video is really legitimate or not. Well, it must be Tyler who made that. That woman. I don't really like her, but I tolerated her because she's Freya's best friend. How could she do this to you? She even slapped you. Don't you dare deny it, Freya. A helper saw the two of you in your room. I just let it slide for the day because I don't want to upset you more, but if I saw her again, I would slap her face until she can't recognize it anymore. Shocked and worried, Quentin turned to me and checked my cheek. What? Tyler slapped you. She did that to you. Is that why? He touched my red cheek and realized it's not because of some blush on like what I told him. Why didn't you tell me? It's okay. I understand why she did that to me. No need to get worried. I'm fine. I can handle that by myself. No, Freya. What she did is not right. Furious. He went out in a huff to confront Tyler. That's when I looked around to see our parents silent and touched by how worried Quentin is for my sake. Mom, you shouldn't have told him that. I don't want to create more animosity between them. Freya, Quentin is your future husband. The dynamics of your relationship will change no matter what because he'll be your other half. It is his responsibility to protect you. They'll fight again because of me. I'm afraid that Tyler will hate me more because of this. Don't worry, Freya. Quentin will do the right thing. Charlotte interfered. What Tyler did to you is wrong. Things like this should not be a secret. Your mom is right. Quentin has the responsibility of protecting you as his future wife and the mother of his children. But I was not pacified by their advice. My mind is still on Quentin as he angrily strolled all the way out looking for Tyler. Quentin's povy. What are you doing? Quentin, unhand me. You're hurting me already. Tyler gritted under her teeth. I continued dragging her up outside the hall after spotting her drinking a margarita while my brothers were kind of busy with their business. And even if they were in her company, I would not hesitate to call out Tyler for what she'd done to Freya. My brothers, being her mates, had her invited to my engagement party despite my objection. It's awkward. Two, I don't want to breed more scuffle between Freya and Tyler. Three, I'm afraid that Freya will not be comfortable at her own engagement party. Why did you do that, Tyler? Why did you slap Freya? If you have a problem with our impending marriage, then talk to me. Slap me. Don't incriminate an innocent person into this mess. Freya has nothing to do with my choice to break up with you. And how many times do I have to tell you that she and I don't want this marriage? Our parents are... I'm trying to control my emotions and voice to prevent myself from attracting people again. My frustrations got the better of me when she wanted to talk to me before the party and looked where it got us all. Another mess that's harder to clean up. Tyler crossed her arms, pain and tears on her face as she prepared to defend herself. Is that what she told you? That I slapped her? Quentin, it's because she hit me first. Look what she did to me. I was just defending myself. You know me. I was never the violent type. I'm the gentlest woman you've ever known, and you saw how I treated her. She's my best friend, Quint. How can I harm her? I love her despite everything, because I know it's not her fault. But why would she hit you? I asked, perplexed. I don't know. I don't. She answered on the brink of crying. 
Maybe she's frustrated about something, and she decided to take it out on me. I just went to their house to talk to her because we've never seen each other for a while after the announcement of your wedding. I just miss my best friend. You know, I miss Freya so much. But she got angry at me and tried to slap me on the face, but I blocked it with my arm. I just slapped her back to defend myself. Taken aback because of that new information, I exasperatedly run my hands on my face. What a ride it has been since that night where I learned about the engagement. From then until now, not once did I get a peaceful and enough sleep due to continuous problems that came my way. When I remembered about the video, I faced her up to gouge out the truth from her. And what about that video you took and edited and uploaded online to look like we're kissing? Tyler, don't you know what you've done? You've just made it harder for me for us to move on from each other. The stakes are high on this matter. Our family's names are on the line again while the public once again has the source to ridicule you us. What would they think about us? Your names have been in and out of the blind items these past few weeks. Why would you even do that? Tears cascading down her face. She smirked in a bitter fashion and bit her lips to stop from crying inconsolably. You're accusing me now. Quint, what happened to you? Just a few weeks back and you've already lost the kind of trust we've built for a long time. Did Freya put that in your head? That I made that video? Is that how you really see me, Quint? Do you really take me as a horrible person, Quint? She sobbed and in a low voice said, You've changed. You're not the same Quentin I know and love anymore. You've sided with them readily without knowing the truth. With one last painful look, she walked out and ran outside the hall. Tyler. I called for her, realizing my mistakes. I've been too harsh with her. She's right. I lashed at her without knowing the whole truth. I let my anger dictated me, and I hurt her in the process. Palming my face, I decided to chase for her, but Lila stopped me. Quent, they're looking for you. Dad wants you to meet some guests. What happened? She paused when she noticed my face. I told her everything. Did you believe her? Freya would never do that to her. She's the sweetest girl I've ever known. You wanted Freya to believe you, she did. And now you're doubting her? What kind of man are you? What a great job indeed, Quint. I could vouch for Freya. As for your ex-girlfriend, nah, I'm not being biased or what. You never even heard me say one bad thing to Tyler throughout the duration of your relationship with her, because I respect you and our brothers. But this time, it's different. I have to defend Freya. No, I believe her. It's just that I took a deep breath. The better thing to do now is to keep a distance from Freya until the day of our wedding, or else I could only be triggering them to fight again. 